Hello, lovelies. Welcome to Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. I look forward to sharing my channeled message with you today. And if you love it, please like, share, review, and subscribe. I love that manifestation is so mainstream now. I love that it's being talked about in books and blogs and television. I love that it's on people's minds and that everybody seems to know what it is. But in general, there are some really important things missing from the conversation. I mean, not the least of which are the two big... Everyone say good morning to disco. <laughs> uh, no matter what time I start this, no matter how sound asleep that dog is, as soon as I start talking, uh, she's got to come shake and, and give you a taste of her jingle bells. Um, <laughs> the two most important ingredients for manifestation that are missing from just about everybody's conversation about it are gratitude and contentment. Then you add that to the fact that most people are too attached to it being exactly 100% what they had imaged. We end up with people who don't manifest shit. It's like my daughter's cakes. My daughter just turned eight and uh, she's super smart and all, but she likes to bake. She doesn't want to follow a recipe and she doesn't want to use a box and so she uses what she believes she should and she starts baking stuff. And there's always a missing ingredient. There's always something not there. And so she makes something that's not cake. What it is is good. It's real good. It's just not cake. And each time it's different, but it's still not cake. She loves it. She enjoys it. It does taste good. Her twin brother, on the other hand, is expecting cake and thinks it's gross. <laughs> and I get that, right? She could definitely get closer to the cake she's visualizing if she had all the ingredients right. So that part maybe is a mistake. But the part that's not a mistake is the fact that she enjoys what she is given. She recognizes that what came of her efforts is exactly what was what was supposed to come, right? She likes to call it baking science, which I think is flipping adorable. So, you know, we can get the ingredients all right, but we still have to be okay with it not being what exactly we wanted. Let's get deeper here. There are lots of strategies for manifestation. Some work, some don't. The real goal, the real piece that is required for momentum, right, is belief. Because the, the universe does not ever act out of pity. It doesn't even act out of compassion. Manifestation is a product of belief and trust and desire coupled with worthiness. Worthiness. Ooh, I could feel some of you shudder when I said that. <laughs> you know, we can only fulfill our highest thoughts of ourselves. So the very first thing we have to do is condition ourselves to think and believe the highest for ourselves. This is trust and it takes time and it can't be rushed. Y'all have heard me talk about it before. It's that chicken inside of the egg, right? It's all on the inside. It's what are we turning into inside of that eggshell? If it's cracked open from the outside, the chicken will die. It's us, our belief, our faith, our worthiness growing inside. And when we are ready, we'll poke our head through that little space at the top. I didn't know this till recently. My, my sister-in-law uh, raises chickens and was showing my children by holding a flashlight underneath what's happening as it gets close to their birth. There's this little space at the top. Uh, I'm 99% sure it's called a pip, 
because I remember thinking about peeps and pips and, you know, Easter, haha. But they poke their head up through that part and they get some breaths there first. I think a lot of spiritual people stay stuck with their head in the pip. Like they're working on it, man, but they stay inside that shell. They can't get past that place that it's more than just an idea, right? So many people, they, they get it. They get their worthiness. They get that it's a thing. They can conceive of the spiritual truth of it all, the, the, the divinity of it all, but they can't get themselves to the place that they'll crack open that egg and be it believe it, trust that it can be true and be seen and affect the world outside and the things that we manifest. But they can, right? The realization takes place inside that egg and then we crack it open, right? It's within us. And the bottom line is, is it can't be handed to you. I can teach you the easiest and the most effective steps for manifestation, and I'm going to. <laughs> I can give you the strategies, right? But the egg can only be cracked by you from the inside because it is each of our individual thoughts that controls our body and our circumstances and allows us to manifest the highest version of ourselves, our lives, our health, our surroundings, our finances, all of it. It doesn't matter what I say. In fact, I posted something a while back. Um, it said essentially, you know, if you change yourself, you change the world around you. And there was one woman who responded to me. And she just said it was bullshit. <laughs> I mean, God bless her. She said she was going to keep working on herself. So amen to that. But she just, well, she wasn't the only one. There were several people. Some right on the post, some privately you know, just said they thought it was bullshit. That it didn't matter what they did to themselves. It, it wasn't going to change their surroundings. Well, that's that sweet little chick still inside the shell. And it's just not true. I'm an example of completely changing my world, my environment, my health, the people around me, my finances, everything. I am an example. And I know hundreds of examples personally from this blessed vantage point that the universe has manifested through me. I'm so pleased. I'm not done, right? There are elements of mine that I'm still working on. And the hardest ones are attached to our childhood, right? If it seemed like no matter how hard your parents worked, there was never enough money. It's very hard to manifest faith in that. Or sometimes I see people who have and then that's all they're able to manifest. They're obsessed with that one thing. You know, the bottom line is everything is pushed forth from the same substance as you, right? Think about it. Those of you who have heard all the lessons have certainly heard me talk about that if you imagine your hand pushed through a pair of pantyhose, right? If your hand is pushed through a pair of pantyhose, you have hand-shaped pantyhose, right? You are you-shaped God, energy, universe, whatever you want to call it, right? The semantics don't matter. It is the universe pushed forth as you. Money is the universe pushed forth as money. This microphone is the universe pushed forth as a microphone. This is true. It's science, right? The scientists have proven that all matter breaks down to the same tiny things, which eventually they're going to find out breaks down to something even tinier. I have, you know, absolutely no question about that. So, you know. You can call it God, you can call it love, you can call it the universe, you can call it energy. The physicists call it matter and they call it quarks and leptons. Quarks and leptons are the tiniest little pieces of matter that they have been able to identify. Now, there's no question that those break down even farther, but what is really fucking amazing is that those things are identical in every type of matter. You, me, 
this microphone, the car maybe you're riding in, the chair you're sitting in, the earbuds that you might be listening to my voice through. We're all made out of the same stuff. That's cool. It helps us realize that we can push things forth into the universe, right? I mean, (laughs) you were just an idea once, right? My children love to tell me how they chose me before they were even an idea, which is pretty awesome considering I've dreamt about them since I was like five. Anyway, the universe is everything that you desire. It is intrinsically good. And so if your desire is intrinsically good, right? It doesn't have to be like freaking martyr stuff. I'm not talking about that, right? Desiring to have a million dollars in the bank is intrinsically good. You might as well have it. The universe wants you to have everything that you need, that you want, to feel secure, to be happy, to enjoy this physical world, right? Unless you're planning to use that money to fuck with somebody else, there's nothing wrong with that desire. And so it is intrinsically good. And so it is your faith in your worthiness that ultimately will be the momentum and the cause for it to manifest. So good motives and faith and worthiness. Understand, the only person that can limit your worthiness is you. It is really, truly believing that because you desire it, it is yours. It is letting go of the idea that someone deserves it more than you, that someone else is better than you. And guys, it's having faith that supply exists, right? There is enough for everyone, absolutely enough. This is no question, right? People love to get in political debates about the 1% and the this and the that. And, and I hear you, but that doesn't mean there's not enough for everyone. There is. There's enough love. There's enough friendship. There's enough money. There's enough joy. There's enough health for all of us. And so it's really about building faith. And if you're working on your worthiness, if you're working on your faith, fantastic. But add to that, okay? Or if you're already working on manifestation, be sure you add the worthiness and stuff to it. You have to have two pieces, okay? So let's get to the nitty gritty, all right? The single best way to manifest anything you want is to live as if, as if it already exists, as if it's been yours all along, and of course, all the time releasing control to the specific outcome. Now, let me be clear. When I say live as if, Okay? I don't mean go spend money that you don't have. I don't mean go do things that you are not physically capable yet of doing. That's not what I mean. I mean know that you can work on that. And start with visualization. Remember, visualization is the highest form of prayer. You can call it daydreaming. You can call it whatever you want. If you have trouble creating that movie in your mind, write about it. Talk to your steering wheel about it on the way to work. Whatever works for you, let yourself flesh out the fantasy of what your life will be like and allow yourself to feel the emotions that go with it, the joy, the peace, the release, right? Sometimes as we embrace these things, there are tears. That's release, right? Along the spiritual journey, there's always a moment where we become a weepy fool, (laughs) And I only say that in in jest. It's not foolish, right? I have one man that I talk to who um, he's really breaking through right now. And he was just telling me how everything seems to make him cry. And all I could say to that was good, good, right? We release our unworthiness. We release our pain and we're free. So we start with visualization. You visualize what your life will be like when you have financial security, what your relationship will be like when you and your partner are able to communicate in a better way, 
what it will be like when you have authentic friendships or a job where you feel respected. You visualize that. You see what it would be like. You, you smile at it. You trust it. You affirm it. You say, yes, this is mine. You don't say who, what, when, where, why, how. You just say yes. My favorite quote ever, some of you know this, is Martin Luther King Jr. He said something to the effect of, you don't have to see the whole staircase, just the first step. This is manifestation. You take that idea, the thing you have visualized, and you set it at the top of the steps. You don't say who, what, when, where, why, how. You just say yes. You set it there in the hands of the universe, lit up in light, and you trust. You trust as the lights step up, right? The steps will present themselves to you. Some of them are surprising. Some of them are uncomfortable. It doesn't matter, right? You add faith to trust and you start to climb up the stairs. Now it's super important, okay, that you do this as much as possible. Visualize this as much as possible. Think about it all the time. If you're thinking about how much your relationship sucks, <laughs> right? Shake your head, say erase, 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 and visualize what you want it to be. If it is that partner in your visualization, that's fine. Maybe that helps you believe. If it is that boss in your visualization, great. If that helps you believe, to feel it, to flesh it out in your mind. But remember, when you take that idea and you set it at the top of the staircase, possibly the single most important thing that you can do for yourself and your highest good is to bless it. You say, this, the equivalent, or something better. This, the equivalent, or something better. It helps you have faith because you're not saying it has to be my way. And it makes sure that you recognize the something better when it shows up. Because that's what you want. If I had not been open to the something better, I would still be with my ex-husband. If I had not been open to the something better, I would still be teaching school, elementary school, which I loved. But as of July 3rd, it's been five years since I resigned. Five years. <laughs> Interesting that five happens to be the number of manifestation. Yeah, those of you who follow me on Facebook may have seen I recently posted a video about um, a certain type of bamboo. It was a, a minister or somebody talking about it. And how what they have to do is nurture this beneath the ground for five years and it looks like there's nothing happening, right? If they quit watering it, if they quit taking really good care of it, it's just going to die beneath the ground. But then once it breaks through the ground, within like months, it's 90 feet tall or something crazy, right? Awesome. And I'm listening to that and I'm thinking, okay. And all of a sudden it hits me. Wait a minute. July is when I resigned from my teaching job. And I went back and looked and it was five years. I thought, oh, yes, manifestation, right? I have been working on the manifestation of who it is I'm meant to be, God's plan for me, my path for many, many years. And there's been levels right? There are levels. I did not manifest this immediately. In fact, it was a progression within my teaching career that came next. One that allowed me, afforded me more time and more presence within the lives of children to have deep conversations and to develop this further, right? the first step didn't look like what I was trying to manifest. I got something better. I got what I needed. Be clear on that. Right? Know that if what manifests is not what you wanted, not what you thought you were trying to get, it's either a necessary step to learn, to grow, to stretch, to get there, right? You can't just all of a sudden blink yourself from Texas to Australia. Like there's some shit you have to do to get there, right? Sometimes it's tests and lessons and things you have to pass. If you skip those, you get to what you were trying to manifest and you screw it up. 
We have to be open, open to the tests, open to all of it. Most importantly, we have to be open to receiving. You know, one of the things that pops into my head is how often I've seen people start to manifest the money that they needed and reject it. Money, while that curriculum, that flow, that manifestation is, of course, always there flowing, right? The law of circulation, you have to put it out to get it back, all of that, yes, right? It has to take physical form. If you're asking the universe to help you pay your rent or whatever, right? Like, the money has to come from somewhere. And if somebody shows up offering you money and you say no, right? Unless they're trying to buy you for it, (laughs) okay? I mean, don't turn the universe down when it offers you what you've asked for. That's crazy. If your dream is to write a novel and suddenly somebody offers you a featured blog spot, don't say no, it's a step. If you're trying to heal your marriage and what you get is evidence that it's time to move on, don't tell the universe no, tell it thank you for the clarity. People think they haven't manifest what they asked for because it's not exactly what they were expecting. My darlings, you got something better. Flesh it out in your mind in whatever version that you need to. See it, believe it, feel it, and before you walk away from that visualization for the day, you say, this, the equivalent, or something better. Because what we desire is ours. What you desire is not necessarily that particular man or that particular friend or that particular type of success. What you desire is the feeling, the emotion, the power, the security that comes from it. Along my path, I thought it was all sorts of things right? When I was a child, I thought I was going to be an actress or a singer. I knew that somehow I would be presenting myself in front of people in this (laughs) very raw form. I was just missing the mark. I couldn't even conceive of what this was. And as I learned and I grew, I thought I was going to be a minister. I have 350 credit hours in that direction. Guess what? I am and I'm not (laughs) a minister. I thought I was all sorts of things, right? There were all these steps along the way. And I could look backwards over my staircase and I could say I missed the mark again and again, but I didn't. Every one of those steps was necessary. And if you look backwards with wide open eyes, you will see that all your steps have been necessary too. Even the ones that hurt. Even if you're climbing out of a gross pit of yuck right now. Learn what you need to learn and grow and recognize that that pit was part of the path to get where you were going. The only way to avoid those pits, right, is to recognize that every single little bitty thing that happens is teaching you something. Pay attention. Utilize it all. You can avoid that. It's not manifestation that lets you avoid the shit, It's the paying attention that lets you avoid that, right? The listening to the whisper in your ear and the trusting your intuition and all of that. That's what avoids the crap. Manifestation is the fulfillment of your desires. And as long as they're good, they're yours. And remember, when I say good, I don't mean some really weird false morality, right? I don't mean that. You can manifest a life that's full of money and travel and that's it. You don't even have to manifest that you're going to be a good person and help other people. As long as you're not trying to manifest that you're an ass, you can have it. (laughs) It's true. What we desire is ours. So then we align to it and then we let it go. We give it to the universe. We trust it. We smile at it. We release control. And we come back to those two most important ingredients that people often forget. Gratitude for what we already have 
and contentment where we already are. If you cannot be grateful for the step you are on, if you cannot be content in the place that you are, the universe will look at you and say, damn it, she doesn't get it. And you will not get the next thing. You cannot get the next thing till you appreciate the thing that you have. I did not manifest the (laughs) circumstances. I didn't manifest the circumstances that allowed me to resign from teaching and do my spiritual work full time until I was fully content and all in. Until I said, if this is where the universe wants me, this is where I stay. This is where I want to be. No matter what's hard about it, I'm all in. Almost instantaneously, when I really truly hit that place, when the egg cracked open, all the momentum built. It all grew. And interestingly enough, (laughs) I'm just now realizing this talking to you today. I always knew that there was more coming for me, right? I had released that. I had become very content and I would think about, you know, doing exactly what I had been doing before this podcast started for the rest of my life. I was like, yeah, I can do this. This is awesome, right? Some days are harder than others. I talk to people about a lot of hard stuff. I deal with a lot of energy, but yeah, I hit that place and other things started to grow. The momentum started to build. And I recognize my original manifestation is still on its way. (laughs) This was one of the steps. It's not the top of the staircase. Fascinating. And I trust wherever I'm going. Whatever the universe has taken, that light I put at the stop of the stairs, which was really just being able to do God's work and having time for my family. (laughs) I wasn't too specific, actually. I had been before that for years and years and years. Hmm. Do I try to manifest very specific things? Hell yeah, I do. I try to manifest the number I want to see in my bank account. I visualize myself logging into the computer, checking the balance. I visualize what the numbers are and how great it feels to see them. (laughs) The confidence, the security. I smile at that. I say yes. I think about it. And then I say this, the equivalent, or something better. I did it to manifest my love. I did it to manifest my career. I did it to manifest my best friend. Yes, 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 yes. This, the equivalent, or something better. Maybe even write it down, right? Stick it somewhere where you can see it every day. And when you see it, don't say who, what, when, where, why, how. Say yes, this, the equivalent or something better. That helps you release control. Find your contentment. Act in faith. Take the class you're inspired to take. Talk to the person you feel like you want to talk to. Google the thing you wanted to Google. Do that. Do what you feel pulled to do because the universe is trying to show you the pathways to get where you're going. Act in faith. And then wait. We don't get to control the time, nor should we want to. Control is super overrated. The universe is so much smarter than me. If I had been thrust into what I do now 15, 20 years ago, when I first started to manifest it, I wouldn't have been ready. I'm not saying it always takes that long. It doesn't. But if it does, 
We must trust the process, right? See it, believe it, and trust the unfolding. Be content. Enjoy the show. Because you're going to want to remember what it felt like while you were getting there. Until next time, beloved. Namaste. Thank each and every one of you for joining me today for this episode of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking time out of your day to spend with me. If you haven't already found me on Facebook and Instagram, uh, come and find me there and join the conversation. My Facebook family is growing and we want you there with us. If you are inspired by the podcast, please consider clicking the green patron button. Not only will your support help keep us going and growing, but also coming very soon, there will be some patron-only content saved just for those of you that choose to help keep us on the air. If you haven't received word, maybe you haven't been following on social media, I am also offering some educational sessions for people inspired by the podcast that would like to learn and know more. You can find detailed information about that in the About section on my Facebook page. I want to send you each light and love, clarity and wisdom. I know always that whether you realize it or not, there's a little brunette with a podcast who's got your back. Until next time, beloved. Namaste.